Thank you. Pleasure to be with you. I'm going to get loaded up here on, uh, on presentation. Uh, I said to uh, uh, Mateus earlier, he came in and he was surprised there were so many people here. And, and I thought to myself, these are facilities people. You guys have already solved half a dozen problems before breakfast. Um, and so I'm glad you're here uh, and glad you're spending time this morning. My presentation is going to be a bit of a, uh, a combination of the two. We learned uh, a little bit about innovation and uh, reuse of space and, and planning for that. And we also talked about the very specific learning spaces. And I'm going to talk about uh, some combinations of two for Indiana University. Every project we do uh, at, any, at any pace uh, with the university has to involve a series of questions. And the first question is, what is the need? And uh, because these are all about intersections. That's where we're going. Michael talked about where we're going in the future. And this is about tomorrow. But there are some base questions we always have to, to ask ourselves. And, and for us, it's all about intersections and what is the need. Um, we have lots of people that we serve in universities, deans, faculty, um, presidents, trustees, who all like bright, new, shiny buildings. But doesn't necessarily mean that we need it. And so even though we're building for tomorrow, we always have to be sure of we're talking about need. Two is university mission. That never goes away. What is it that we're, we're trying, trying to achieve? Not all universities are the same. Uh, ours is focused on one thing. Yours may be focused on another. Master plans. Uh, we want to always uh, be true to our master plans that we uh, uh, look at every generation or so and to make sure we're true to those plans because you can get outside of your own box pretty quickly. And then in terms of what we're talking about with research and innovation, I think there are two other things. One is economic development and two are partnerships. Uh, those are things that maybe we didn't talk about 20 years ago uh, when we were looking at building buildings for research and innovation. And every community is trying to do the same thing. Doesn't matter whether you live in New York, California, Philadelphia, Indiana, the Midwest, every community that you live in is trying to find the magic bullet to drive economic development and try to create high wage jobs in your community. And because we have the university in those communities, we are a key to most of that because we have the knowledge base. We have the brain power that's going to fuel those high wage jobs. So we are at the intersection Again, that word intersection, again, of all of those things. And so it is, we're not doing anything unique where we are that isn't being looked at someplace else. Uh, what we're, but every community is trying to do is to leverage the power of the university and that brain power and that research. And that then creates partnerships. And we're going to, later on this morning, we're going to talk a little bit about P3s, public-private partnerships, that has us doing things, again, differently than we did it a decade or two ago. So I'm going to talk about five major projects that we have going on. Uh, I'm going to talk about uh, 16 Tech uh, District in Indiana, which is a, a, a part of the Indiana Biosciences Research Institute, um, where I'm going to talk about uh, expansion of Indiana University Health. We have a health system that's the largest health system in Indiana. And uh, we're going to talk about the new academic health center with that. That's about a billion dollar project. We're going to talk about uh, the Wishard Hospital redevelopment site, which is on the, the campus of the Indiana University School of Medicine. Uh, we're going to talk about, in our Bloomington campus, uh, regional academic health center, and then last, uh, uh, multi-institutional, three universities coming together to, to create a, a health sciences center in Evansville, Indiana. All of this added up is uh, over $2 billion worth of project. And so uh, I'm going to talk a little bit about those. So let's start first. Just to give you a little bit of uh, geography for those of you, the very few of you that don't know the capital city of Indiana and Indianapolis, I'll give you just a uh, downtown Indianapolis is here. This is the IUPUI campus uh, and the IU School of Medicine that is administrated by Indiana University. And so this is our campus here. And then uh, 
this is, I'm going to be talking about in a second, the Wishard, old Wishard Hospital space. This is um, the IU Health Academic Health Center space that I'm going to be talking about up here. And this is the District of 16 Tech. And that, a little bit closer up, is at the, the campus is now down here. And this is at the confluence of the White River and Fall Creek right here. So, um, water, water. One of the constraints of that site is that this is where all the drinking water, all the water for the city of Indianapolis comes from. That's the, the, basically the water company is right here. That's why that's all green space right there. So serious wells there and serious water lines. It's part of the reason it's never been developed. This is somewhat industrial space. We, IU, have acquired most of it over time. Water company owns the rest of it and then the city and, uh, and so developing it is, is hard. And finally, there's been an effort over the last decade or so to try to figure out how do we leverage this real estate location next to the university to create something special in terms of research and innovation. Because one of the things we know about researchers is that they want to be near other researchers. They, they want to, so even if there was uh, drug companies or whatever that located here, they want to be close to the research that's going on with the School of Medicine right there. And so that's what makes that geography very important. Lots of different property owners here, uh, but most of it is ours. So the purple boxes are, are Indiana University, the blue boxes are Indiana University. And so this is a public-private partnership. We're bringing all these property owners together for one common cause to create a single te technology and innovation district utilizing existing buildings that were there, not unlike what Mateus was talking about uh, with some old warehouse buildings, but also new, uh, new developments. And then the, oops, the, this is the master plan for that site that creates the new district. These are still the water, the well fields here that can't be built upon, the building around the water lines underneath here. Uh, and then one of the key components of this is the campus is right here and building a new bridge across Fall Creek that will join the two together but also create a major point of ingress and egress for the campus that uh, we've long needed. But this is the development of that site down the road. It includes research and innovation space, um, uh, uh, space for private companies to grow, uh, research buildings, uh, as you might imagine, eventually restaurants and, and housing and hotels and, and things like that. All of this built out is about, uh, about a half a billion dollars worth of project. Uh, and again, those are things that we're talking about those intersections today that maybe we didn't before was all those industries were working in different silos. And this is, again, the city and the state and the private sector uh, and the university all coming together. Second project I'll talk about is the uh, Wishard Hospital. Um, uh, redevelopment. This one right here uh, it was an old, an old uh, county hospital that uh, we acquired in a big trade so that they could build a new hospital and uh, 13 buildings and we have been, uh, that's an, an area of all those buildings and I will tell you that if any of you have old hospitals in your communities, uh, they are going away at a rapid pace. And what to do with those buildings is a big question. Because of uh, the changes in healthcare, building new hospitals is a, is a big industry. And we have uh, acquired uh, or trying to deal with several right now as to what we do with them because old hospitals don't convert very well. And so we are, this one was one that we acquired and so we ended up demolishing a good chunk of it, that's part of the demolition process. Again, I'm guessing that you have some hospital buildings in your communities that might look like that, built in the 50s and 60s, maybe early 70s, and, uh, and they're becoming non-functional uh, given where healthcare is going today. So we took down a, a bunch of that and that's what that space uh, will now look like as open space surrounded by uh, the buildings we decided to keep and then again, the School of Medicine and research space, uh, re our existing research buildings are down here. And then built out in terms of a master plan, these are the new research buildings that will go in here. This is looking at it from the other direction. This is the Fall Creek. This is the 16 Tech over here. Uh, looking back towards the campus, 
hospitals here, uh, major children's hospital, the Riley Children's Hospital is right there, and then this is all research space from the School of Medicine that exists, and then new research space here. This is another hospital building right here that I didn't show you that is likely to come down as well um, because it is becoming obsolete. That leads us to new academic health center. So we were just talking about this space right here, and we were talking about the footprint right here with Wishard. Now we're gonna go over here by about three quarters of a mile, and this is the, what's the uh, IU Health Methodist Hospital campus. And looking at that from a closer direction, this is I-65, and major hospital complex, but about half of this will be torn down and built new. And this is, uh, will be a combination, again, those connections between, uh, uh, between healthcare and education that Pat talked about is that within here, we're going to move the hub, the academic hub of the School of Medicine to this location um, and put uh, all of the academic instruction of the School of Medicine at this site. It's, not, it's long been practiced to put the School of Medicine beside a hospital. That's not new. What's new is, is some of the spaces that Pat talked about, is integrating education into the hospital. So that if you could imagine a floor of a hospital having spaces that are educationally based on a particular floor as opposed to them all being in one building. And we're starting to talk about something that was long never discussed, which is the education in tandem of doctors and nurses. Uh, you can imagine that they're all doing patient care, but they get educated in separate silos. And we're starting to bring those people together, uh, which is, from an education standpoint, very exciting. So this, this project will be about Half of this will get torn down, new build, about a billion dollars, uh, most of it uh, healthcare and hospital, Ac education space built into it, and a little bit of research. We have our, all of our brain sciences and neuroscience research is right here through our School of Medicine. And, and so those are the, the, uh, uh, the programs that will be there. And then let me move down to our Bloomington campus, uh, again, for geography's sake. The flagship campus of Indiana University is in Bloomington. Uh, that's where, where our hub is of 45,000 students. And what we're doing here is, again, local regional hospital that exists on the other side of Bloomington. We are going to be tearing that down and building a new hospital uh, on the campus, actually on our golf course. This is uh, uh, the north side of campus. Our golf course is right here. This site of this hospital right here is the driving range. Some of you may consider getting, building on the golf course sacrilege. We are, we are blessed with land. And so all we're gonna do, this is the driving range. We're gonna move the driving range over here. The golf course will stay. People in the hospital will be able to see the golf course. And it is a beautiful natural setting in the hills of Southern Indiana, uh, green as far as you can see. Uh, we've already had lots of jokes about people coming to drop off their spouses for appointments or whatever, and then they go over and hit, they hit balls. Um, and this is part of a research park that already exists. This project will be about $400 million of a new hospital. Again, that trend of new hospitals coming to bear with us. But what we're trying to do is, again, create the intersection between not only the new hospitals, but with the, the academic training. So we are going to put uh, a regional, our regional uh, medical education school of medicine site here Nursing education will be here. Speech and hearing uh, education will be here. Uh, moving those from the main campus to this location to better serve patients because that's what this is all about. And to better serve patients, we need to improve the educational process of location. And so those are the things that I just talked about that are going to be uh, at, at, in that regional education center. Again, fostering that collaboration, those intersections, um, and expand our health education programs in su southern uh, Indiana. And then last is uh, uh, down in Evansville, Indiana, which is in the far southwestern part of the state of Indiana. We have a, uh, again, medical education center. When I talk about medical education centers, we have, for the School of Medicine, uh, we have regional sites throughout the state where they do their first year uh, perhaps in Indianapolis at the hub, and then they go off uh, into different hospitals around the state. And so we have medical education centers there. We have one in Evansville right now, 
And so again, part of an economic development project, the mayor and others came together and said, what if we put all health sciences education in Evansville, in downtown Evansville, which would then include our Indiana University School of Medicine, it would include nursing programs from the University of Southern Indiana and physical therapy programs from the University of Evansville, which is private, and bring them all together in one building in downtown, and we're the lead on that, and this is about a $60 million project that is about to break ground, and uh, with three institutions partnering on education space, uh, there's a hospital right next door, um, but Evansville, like lots of uh, small Midwestern cities, uh, Evansville is the second largest community in the state of Indiana, um, but relatively small, uh, uh, having trouble economically uh, uh, reinvigorating their downtown, and they see this as a key cog in that, and, and I think it will be, because it's going to redevelop uh, an entire series of blocks in downtown Evansville. So those are a um, series of uh, projects that uh, um, talked about. We are happy to uh, answer any questions that you might have between Pat and I and Mateus and, uh, and tried to run through some projects real quick, but we're happy to answer any questions. And Pat's over here and Mateus is over here. So, questions? Yeah, um, I think you're, is, uh, in, in terms of joint commissioning of that space, um, we, the hospital space is different, and so we handle that differently. And so those builds are, are different, and so um, uh, we do, uh, uh, commissioning of hospital spaces is governed completely differently, uh, patient care, all of those things. So that's, a, uh, those are separate, separate bodies. That, that is correct, yes. Um, so we will end up having a hub building uh, for all the offices and, all, and some lecture rooms and things like that that'll be in a separate building, and then we will be in for simulation centers and things like that, we'll be in the, in the, in the hospital setting, and yes, we'll, we'll have to fall under those commissioning rules. De depends, and I'm going to talk about a little bit of that later this morning, depends on w what the project is. Uh, the 16 Tech Project, uh, we are uh, bringing all that land together by all the owners into one, e one formed entity and that will then own the land and then lease it back and then we participate in the upside of what happens down the, down the road on those land leases. Uh, a nonprofit, and so it's other instances. Uh, that one is, yeah. Um, in downtown Evansville, uh, that uh, property was owned by the city of Evansville, and then they turned it to a developer, and so because we don't own any land there. Uh, and then uh, the good question regarding the other hospital sites within, even though uh, I talk about the hospitals, Indiana University Health and Indiana University, corporately, those are separate bodies, but Capital, we, we do things together. So the university owns all the land of those hospitals. So, uh, and. Correct, right. Sure. Pat, what, what's sort of driving this expansion that Indiana is doing into the on all things health here, what, what, what are some of the goals you're hoping to get out of this, all this $2 billion worth of construction? I, I think you're seeing it um, across the country. I don't think it's unique to us. We've just, you know, we're all one happy family. But uh, Pat's doing the same thing. It's all related to the changes in health care. People think, or the, the thought was, was that when the Affordable Care Act was passed, health care would collapse in this country just the opposite in terms of capital. If you talk to major architects in the country, we are building hospitals in this country faster than you could ever imagine uh, because uh, the demands of healthcare now is that all that, all that services be integrated, is that you can come, you know, people don't stay in hospital. We're reducing bed count uh, by a lot because people don't stay. You know, they're, they're there for a procedure and then they're home 14 hours later. And so then the intersection of, of being able to do your appointments in one place that you're not driving across town, 
all of those things are coming together into physical spaces. Yeah, it's, you know, it's, um, so in New York City, you'll probably, you know, there are 30, 40, 50, 100 different uh, hospitals. I'm gathering that five, six, eight years, you're going to have that narrowed down to a fraction of what it is today. You've got um, the, the key hospital uh, just purchasing up the, the smaller local community hospitals. An extraordinary expansion, uh, basically people on top of one another's, uh, you know, what was known as traditional turf. And you see uh, really sort of expansion and identity by uh, specialty. So Columbia Doctors, affiliated with New York Presbyterian Hospital, is really um, a hospital that, uh, not dissimilar to Cleveland Clinic or Mayo Clinic, uh, specializes, and we really, we're a specialty type of hospital across a variety of uh, sorts of disciplines. Uh, and that's sort of uh, our mantra. Uh, with that is to say, uh, what we're doing is to say we have uh, about 150 um, Columbia doctors practice sites around in the tri-state area, uh, and we're building those into multidisciplinary uh, uh, practice sites in a collaborative environment or a collaborative method with New York Presbyterian Hospital. Uh, that level of collaboration is also uh, deeply informing the designs of the facilities, uh, where you're getting uh, not only you know, simulation for education types of facilities, but also you're using that for clinical skills uh, training for clinicians as well. It does, and that's one of the questions we deal with, particularly in Indianapolis, is this is all in the central city of Indianapolis. And so the question is, how much of that do you rely on? Do you invest in being in the suburb or on the Beltway or something like that? Or will people have an aversion to coming downtown for everything? And you have to think of the patient as a customer. Um, and then we have to, from the university side, you have to think of, again, if all the faculty and researchers are right there, and you want to do research in the same location as the hospital, you don't want to put that out in the suburbs. And so, like anything in real estate, it's all location. And those are questions uh, that I'm not sure we absolutely know the answers to. Some of this is a gamble. But we are trying to, the one in Bloomington on the, on the, uh, the core campus is uh, putting it all in one location for an entire multi-county region. And so we are saying that, again, if you're going to have your hip replaced or you're going to um, have some procedure or surgery or whatever, it's all going to be right there. And then the doc offices will all be around it as well. And then, again, we bring the academic programs to that location. Well, thank you guys so much. We're, we're out of time, but two excellent, uh, three excellent presentations this morning. So thank you guys thank you. so much. Thank you.